this video, I show you how to play a 12 bar blues on guitar. Blues is essential to know as a musician, even if you don't consider yourself to be a blues player, as it's so prevalent in various genres of music, including rock, jazz, country, folk, and would you believe it, blues. Hi, this is Simon Candy from AcousticGuitarLessonsOnline.net, and in this lesson, you're going to learn all about the standard 12 bar blues progression, plus cool ways you can approach playing this on your guitar, including the use of bass lines, shuffle approaches, and cool sounding turnarounds, getting that unmistakable blue sound into your guitar playing. I'll start by showing you the basic structure of the 12 bar blues, plus variations you're likely to come across in different situations. Okay, so the 12 bar blues progression. So for this video today, I'm gonna to be using the key of E, okay, in E blues. So the chords in an E blues are E7, A7, and B7, okay? Now a standard 12 bar blues, the best way to think and break up a 12 bar blues is three, bar, three lots of four bars. Now in the first four bars of our blues, we typically have the E7 chord, the one chord, okay? For the first four bars. Now the middle four bars, we have the A7 for two of those bars, and then we return to the E7 for the other two. Now the last four bars is where the most action happens, if you like, right? We get the third chord of our blues, the B7 coming in first, in the first of the last four bars. That's for one bar. Then we have A7 for a bar, and we then return to E7 for a bar, and typically in the last bar, we go to B7, okay? So that is the last four bars of our blues. Okay, now within a, a standard 12 bar blues, there are some variations that will occur that you will see often. So for example, the first four bars, sometimes there's what is called a quick change blues. And that is, you've got the E7 in bar one, and in bar two, you have A7, which comes in just for the bar, and then you're back to E7 for the remaining two bars of first four bars of the blues. So that's known as a quick change blues. That happens in my experience about 50% of the time and the other 50% will be just the one chord for the whole four bars. And sometimes, not as often in my experience, depends on the sort of blues you're playing. Um, this happens a bit in rock blues, you know, blues in the rock like Johnny Be Good and, and tunes like that. But sometimes in the last four bars, it's a little simplified. And instead of B7, A7, E7 back to B7, it's basically B7 for two bars, and then E7 for two bars, okay? So it's, it's simplified down sometimes in some blues, but this is all under the banner of stock standard 12 bar blues here, just slight variations you'll see. One other thing I wanna point out, the last two bars of the blues, whatever you do in the last two bars of the blues, that is the turnaround. It's turning the, the progression back around to the top. So you've got, um, uh, uh, <laughs> went blank there. You got your E7 for one bar and your B7 for one bar, typically. Well, sometimes that, that B7 will come in halfway through the last bar, but it's E7, B7. That's the turnaround. And we're going to see shortly in today's video some cool things that we can do at that point in our 12 bar blues. Okay, so the whole point now is to look at some different ways that we can kind of dress this 12 bars up. A 12 bar blues is just like a blank canvas and there's a number of things that you can bring to it, endless things, okay? Sp people spend lifetimes with this one chord progression, you know, true sort of blues musicians. So um, I wanna take you through a few here. So first off, we can play like, uh, you know, just strumming through the blues, but with a bit of a swing feel, okay? So by swing, I mean, well, swinging eighth notes, okay? So straight eighth notes are even. It's like one and two and three and four. That's a straight eighth note feel. If we wanna swing that, it's gonna go one and two and three and four and one and two, right? It's uneven. You get the longer, shorter, longer, shorter. Still fills the same amount of space. It's still collectively the same value the eighth note there, or the, the two eighth notes fill the beat, but they're swung, okay? So a swing fill we could do with the blues. And just what I'll do here is I'll play a swing fill and I'll put in some, um, I'll put in some little uh, 
um, embellishments, not even so much embellishments, yeah, embellishments, you know, little extensions and embellishments on the course just to give it a little bit of life, a little bit of movement. But the main thing I want you to focus on here is just the swing feel. It's one way that you can play a 12 bar blues. So a one, two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. I'm playing through the, the chords of the blues. I did the, the variation or the, 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 the one that, the arrangement that has the one chord, the E7 for the first four bars there. And I was playing just some basic little, um, as I say, embellishments or extensions to the chord. Um, okay. On the E7, I was using my pinky, there's an E7, and then I was taking the pinky down a fret, makes it like an E6 chord, and then just an E chord. E7, E6, E6, <laughs> and uh, the open. <laughs> it was that type of thing on the E7 chord there. On the A7, similar thing, very similar, in fact, the same thing, <laughs> just on an A7. A7, it's like an A6 there, adding in the F sharp, and then the open E string. And then on the B7, when it came up, a little simpler, it was the B, and I was then taking my pinky off, I think, to get this E in there, kind of making it a B7 um, a suspended, or was it add? It's an add 11. Okay, so there's some cool little, you know, extensions that you can apply to create some interest in a blues. Okay, so we just looked at a swinging blues. What about a straight feel? So as you saw, a straight feel is just exactly that, even eighth notes. One and two and three and four. And you're going to get that more in a sort of rock setting, okay? And a very common thing to do in a rock blues, and just in blues in general, this can be in a swinging blues as well, um, is a shuffle. So you can take, we'll take, I'll show you how we're going to address each chord here. So we're going to play power chords. Okay, I'm going to play an E power chord, open position down here in my second fret. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate playing that power chord with the third finger coming down on the fourth fret of the fifth string. And at that point I also play the open E string, the sixth string with that note as well. Okay, and we go back and forth. One and two. It's a great way to play through a blues. When you get to the A chord, you play the A power chord, just move your finger up a string. So your upper string set here on strings five and four, and you do the same thing. Okay, when you get to the B, uh, you can do the B. The B will be a little bit more challenging because you're gonna have to go, you know, you're starting from a closed position with the B power chord and you'd need to use your pinky. You might want to use your first and second fingers for the power chord, allowing that pinky to come up a little bit more. So you can please yourself as to which way you might go about that. So I'm going to do that now so you can hear the same chord progression, 12 bar blues in E, using, uh, having a straight fill with the shuffle. Okay, one, two, three, and four, and... Okay, so now we're going to have a look at a third way that you could play through the same 12 bar blues progression here, and that is using like a bass riff. Okay, this is very, very common to do on the guitar and gives a different dynamic again to your 12 bar blues. So here we're just playing basic bass lines or grooves on the lower strings 
through the changes of a 12 bar blues. So let's see, here's a common one um, that you see a lot. I'll play a little bit of it on an E um, chord for you. Okay, and there's lots of variations of this. That's that's one. And so basically, I'm playing. It's all over an, an E7 chord just then. I'm playing the low E. Then I've got this G to G sharp targeting the third of the chord. Then onto the fifth string, playing the B, the fifth of the chord, and then coming down onto the C sharp and back to the B. Okay, that's the basic pattern there for the E. Repeating it. Notice I've gone back to a swing feel here. You could do it straight, which should be fine, but I'll go with the swing for this one. So I did that for three of the four bars, I think it was one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. The last bar I went, I had this little descending bass line. That's just a little bit of variety to bring it into the A um, chord, um, the next four bars of our blues there. So we're coming down the D, C sharp, B, and then a little hammer on, G to G sharp, and to the B. Now on the A chord, this is the great thing with blues, you can just take the exact thing we did and move it up a string set and you're good to go. So just two of those two bars of A, and then you're back to the lower, one for E. Now when you get to B, it's a little bit different because you've got a fretted note that you're starting from, not an open string. So you play that, and then you move up to the th uh, fifth fret, and you play the fifth to the sixth fret. And then on the fourth string, the fourth to the sixth, okay? Now notice here, once you've played that root note and you move up, there's nothing different from that point on to what you're doing on the E or you're doing on A. It's just B. But you're not starting from an open string with the root note, you're starting from a fretted note. So you need to fret that down here, then move it up, and then it's going to be a familiar pattern to you. Let me just play through so you can hear it across the entire 12 bar blues. Uh, one, Two, three, four. Okay, so I mentioned earlier about the turnaround, the last two bars of our 12 bar blues. So with the turnaround, you can just play the chords and that'll be fine, but it's very common for the guitar or whatever instrument might be sort of featuring um, to fill that out with some cool little riffs and lines. And this is because when you've got a vocal going through a blues, it's typically the last two bars, there's no singing. So it's an opportunity for the instruments to do something and to bring it back around, to turn it back around to the start of the 12 bar blues. So again, the, the chord structure here for the last two bars is an E7 and a B7, okay? And there are endless things that you can do, but they're, they're very cliched sounding things. Cliched because, they're, because they're used a lot, because they sound good, okay? And so I'm gonna play you three turnarounds here that you can sort of you know, play around with and I'll put one or two of them into context for you okay so the first turnaround is going to go like this okay once more okay so very simple we're playing the low E that's implying the E chord at the time in the last two bars and then we've got this descending line a chromatic line Th third fret to the second, to the first, and the open. Just moving down chromatically, but in between each one of those notes, I play an open E. First string there. And then to the B7, which happens in the last bar. 
and then that's ready to go back to the start of the blues and away you go again. Another one that's quite similar, it's got chromatic movement, a lot of these turnarounds do, um, but this chromatic movement is going to ascend, not descend. Okay, so I'll play this one for you. Okay, and again. Okay, so what's happening there? Again, we're starting with the low E. And then we're moving chromatically up from the G sharp to the A open, A sharp to the B, which is of course the root of the B7 chord, and that's what follows there. The third one I want to show you here is very, very common too, and it's got the same sort of motion of, or the chromaticism, and descending, but back on the higher strings. And actually what we're using here, I'll play it for you first. Okay, so what's happening here is you've got this little E7 chord and the whole idea here, this is like the D7 chord, the open D7 moved up two frets to be an E7, which is of course our chord at the beginning of the, of the turnaround. And we move that down chromatically, one fret at a time, to resolve it to another E chord, the top three strings of the open E chord. And then we, I had a little bass run up to the B7. Okay. Now what I was also doing was I was um, putting a little bit of a picking pattern in there. I was playing the three to the one to the two, being the strings of the chord. So arpeggiating the, the little seventh chords here. And then I did the same thing here, but I think, um, yeah, but I took my pinky off the top string, so I got the open E with this particular seventh chord. And then when I moved it down to D7, it went back on the pinky, and then into the E. And the bass run up to the B7. Okay, so that sounds cool too. So these turnarounds all would happen in the last two bars of our blues. So I'll just play through a couple of choruses of the blues here and I'll just try and mix and match some of these ideas together. Okay, so let's uh, see how we go. One, two, three, four. If you like the blues and the approaches that we've covered in today's video, then you will love this free ebook audio, How to Build Your Very Own Acoustic Guitar Fingerpicking Blues Song. In this ebook, I break the 12 bar blues down into four key areas, making it easy for you to understand the structure of a, of a blues. The whole book then goes about showing you how to approach each one of these areas of the blues with a variety of fingerpicking riffs and licks from which to create your arrangements. Click the link in the description below this video and download your free ebook audio, How to Build Your Very Own Acoustic Guitar Fingerpicking Blues Song. Let me know in the comments section what ways you like to approach playing a 12 bar blues progression. I read every comment and I would love to hear of ways you like to play the blues. If you like this video, then hit that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel here, my YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit the notification bell button so you know when new videos are being released. This is Simon Candy from AcousticGuitarLessonsOnline.net. As always, thank you for watching this video. I appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.